Hello everyone, today I am going to discuss with you all regarding the very interesting topic by name cardiopulmonary resuscitation. I am going to discuss 10 questions with the answer and before that I am going to give you some interesting facts about the CPR. The cardiopulmonary resuscitation has a great impact on the survival of an individual when their own breathing or the heart beat have been stopped. If we go back to the history, it dates back to 1542 where the first earliest tracheostomy was done. In the year 1768, the rules for the resuscitation was given by the Dutch Human Society. In 1874, Mortis has first performed the cardiac compressions. In 1892, the first successful CPR was done. And almost 60 years back, 1960, the first guideline was given for the CPR. In the mid of the 20th century, very important that a person called Peter Seffer has described a jaw thrust maneuver and hence he is popularly, very popularly known as a father of CPR. So let us see all 10 questions and answers on CPR in today's presentation. So the first one is what is CPR, why the CPR is important, how does the CPR work, who should know the CPR, what is the very first step in CPR, what is head tilt chin lift maneuver, what is jaw thrust, how to check whether the breathing is intact or not, how to give mouth to mouth breathing and last which pulse to be checked after giving the artificial breathing. Remember one thing, uh, we are performing and following the AHA guideline, American Heart Association guidelines for performing the CPR. Okay? Now let us see the first one, what is CPR? So cardiopulmonary resuscitation is the emergency life saving procedure that is performed when the person's own breathing or the heartbeat have stopped. Second, why it is very much important? So it is important because neurological damage will occur to the brain if the blood supply will stop or ceases for three to four minutes to the brain. So very important that neurological damage will occur if CPR is not performed. And there will be very poor outcome if no resuscitation is begun in eight minutes. So CPR has to be performed at, as the earliest. Now what happens if you give properly and timely perform CPR, it will double or triple the victim's chances of survival post ventricular fibrillation cardiac arrest. That's why properly and timely CPR has to be given. CPR basically provides a critical amount of blood to the heart and the brain. And the golden statement for this why CPR is important is every minute without the CPR, the chances of survival will be decreased by 7 to 10 percent. So it's so simple if you delay the CPR by one minute the chances of survival will be delayed by 7 to 10 minutes. So you need to perform the CPR at, at the earliest. Now let's see the third one how does the CPR work. So every one of us we are aware that CPR works on heart pump model and the chest pump mechanism. You can read about this too in the detail. But what basically it says when we are performing the CPR, the amount of blood which is remaining in the left ventricle, it will go for the systematic circulation. The blood will again come back to the heart. Okay. And again, when you are giving the compression, it will go back to the circulation. And chest pump mechanism, when the breathing will, in, uh, will start improving it, more amount of oxygenated blood will go inside the uh, lungs okay and that in turn improves the ventilation and perfusion so you can read about this in detail number four that who should know the CPR it is not restricted to the doctors therapists or the nurses every healthcare professionals every common man and everyone on this earth okay human beings they should know about the CPR because it's such a good technique or the approach that if we know and if we are able to save the life of even one person, okay, that's worth learning it, okay. So everyone should know the CPR. Now, very first step in the CPR is to assess the victim for a response. So tap the victim's shoulder and shout loudly, okay, that are you alright, are you alright, are you alright, okay. 
and if you are alone okay and uh, you are finding an unresponsive victim you can shout for the help if no one responds you can immediately activate the EMS emergency response system call 108 and get an AED automated external defibrillation, defibrillation. and if available then return to the victim and begins with the steps of CPR now here you need to remember that initially we used to go with the a b c d e f g h i okay we used to go with the a b c approach airway breathing and circulation but now what the new guideline says we have to go with the cab approach c a b that means compression uh, sorry circulation airway and then breathing now number six what is head tilt chin lift maneuver so place the one hand on the victim's forehead and push with your palm to tilt the head back Place the fingers of the other hand under the bony part of the lower jaw near the chin and then lift the jaw to bring the chin forward. What is jaw thrust maneuver? You can recall uh, Peter Sapper who, who is popularly known as the father of uh, CPR. So if you suspect a cervical spine injury and op then open the airway using a jaw thrust without the head extension. Place your fingers under the angles of the victim's lower jaw and lift with both the hands. And if lip is closed, retract the lower lip with your thumbs. Okay. Now let us see the eighth one. How to check whether the breathing is intact or not. So it's very simple. You can go with the look, listen and feel. So we need to go ahead with the look, listen and feel. That means first you have to place your ear near the victim's mouth and nose. And while observing the victim's chest, you have to look for the chest to rise and fall. That means the look, listen for the air escaping during the exhalation and feel for the flow of air against your cheek. So very important is to go ahead with the look, listen and feel maneuver. Now let's see the ninth one. Okay. Uh, yeah. And if the victim is not breathing adequately you can use a barrier device to give a two breaths while watching for the victim's chest to rise okay. the ninth one is how to give a mouth to mouth breathing so you need to hold the victim's airway open with the head tilt chin lift you need to pinch the nose closed with your thumb and index finger using the hand on the forehead and take the breath and seal your lips around the victim's mouth creating a tight seal and give the one breath and watch for the chest to rise as you give the breath if the chest does not rise okay repeat the head tilt chin lift mouth to mouth device okay can be used uh, you know uh, it's also called as a barrier device its uh, advantage is there is no uh, the chances of infection can be minimized if you use the barrier device let's see the tenth and the last which pulse to be checked after giving the artificial breathing so after giving two breaths healthcare providers should take at least five seconds and not more than 10 seconds to check for a pulse to perform a pulse check in adult we palpate for the carotid pulse and to perform a pulse check in the infant we go for a brachial pulse here the very important thing is to note that okay you should take at least 5 seconds and not more than 10 seconds for the pulse check because you know that if you are delaying if you are taking the pulse for entire 1 minute again the chances of survival will be decreased by 7 to 10 percentage so you have to keep this in the mind while checking the pulse okay so thank you very much for watching the video